Hi guys, welcome to Geekism Gaming, my name is John T and today we're going to have an overview and tutorial of the trigger feature that has come in the Planet Coaster beta. This is a fantastic feature that really is going to help us with things like dark rides, uh, but also a lot of other bits and bobs you can do with them as well. But I've seen a few people post on various forums and Reddit saying they're struggling to uh, get the system working or, or figuring out how to really use it to its full advantage. Um, so here we're going to go over a couple of things uh, with, with them now. So we're going to start with some really basic stuff. We're going to use this awesome uh, Magic Cats ride. I'm sure you'll agree this is probably the most intense ride you've ever seen. <laughs> Basically I've set this up so we've got a constant flow of cars going around so we can really see uh, what's going on with them. So first of all I'm going to show you what can be triggered uh, with uh, with the triggering system. So we're going to go to all. The easiest way to do this is if you go to filters and then property. Under the property there is a triggerable option and that's quite tricky to say but triggerable shows you all the different options that uh, all the different items excuse me that can be triggered and for the most part they're animatronics, um, speakers and special effects. Uh, we'll use a, a special effect to start us off with, I think, just because they're really quite easy to see. So let's do. Um, uh, there's a flamethrower, I think. That's probably. A, yeah, flamethrower. Uh, so, okay, so this one is constantly on, and that's actually a really great way of, uh, of showing you how the system works. So, what we'll do is we'll place, uh, we'll place this just here, and we'll leave it sticking out just so we can really see it in there. Uh, get to it, but obviously you can embed that and place it wherever you want into the ride. So there's our trigger. It's not actually attached to the ride; it's completely separate. Although you can attach it to the building uh, from the from the coaster. Uh, uh, what's the word? Entrance area, uh, station is the word I'm trying to think of. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be the item. Doesn't have to be attached to the coaster in any way through through buildings. So what we're going to do is click on there, and you'll see here we've got trigger duration. Now sometimes the option. Uh, is just triggered or, or, or worked by trigger and we'll show you with the cannon uh, here you can see activate on trigger there we go but this is actually really useful if for instance you wanted to use a cannon in a maybe a, a pirate building for a restaurant or something and you just want a cannon set up but you don't have had it close on if you activate with trigger and then do nothing else it's basically now a stationary object it's basically a way of turning off the animatronic for uh, for a lot of the animatronics you can do that as long as they're uh, part of the triggers some of them aren't um, the cowboys, for some reason, can't be triggered. Maybe that'll be coming later. I don't know. But for now, that's actually quite useful because I think the cannon looks great. But, uh, you know, you set that up next to a pirate restaurant, you don't want it blowing the faces off people who are uh, queuing up. So there's a little extra point. But mainly, uh, the idea is you can either activate them or not. Now, for anything that's permanently on, such as this one here, uh, you have a different option that is trigger duration. Now, trigger duration will again turn it off. Uh, without a trigger attached to it, but also what this duration is here is this is how long it will be turned on for once the trigger activates it. So here it's got three seconds and we'll leave it at that for now. Okay, so let's actually build a trigger. Let's get rid of that cannon. Uh, let's go back into the track and you'll notice there's an option here that looks like a little pulley lever and that she triggers. And then uh, it'll tell you how many there are and how many things happen with the triggers. It should be zero zero to start off with. If we click edit triggers, uh, we'll go into this menu here, and it's as simple as clicking add trigger. Now the triggers appear at the start of the uh, of the track, and to move them, you have to actually sort of click and drag them along the track. So if you wanted it round here, you have to click and drag it all the way around. That can get a little tricky when you're doing it on uh, larger coasters with loops and inversions, but uh, unfortunately that's how it works. I can't find a way of just clicking where I want them on the track. There, there may be a way, uh, but left click and right click don't seem to do anything so uh, there we go we'll set this trigger up here and then we'll set uh, if we click an arrow here we can attach objects to triggers and once we click that button we can then click here it says here 40 pieces available and as far as I'm aware this is through the whole park because that 40 is actually including all the lights in my park entrance over there by the way it's a Disney style park entrance if you would like to see how that's built you can uh, click another video in my channel <laughs> a blazing plug there so uh, we want to pick uh, this flamethrower here, so we'll click it, and there we go, that flamethrower is now synced up to that trigger, so you'll see as this car comes over the trigger, it'll set that flamethrower off for three seconds, and there it goes. The other thing you can do is add a delay from how long it takes from when the trigger is activated to that item going off. And you can do that uh, by clicking within the sub menu of the thing there, and we'll select time delay to be two seconds. So this time, as the next trolley comes past, you'll see that it hits here. Two seconds later, one, two, it sets this off, 
for three seconds. There you go, simple as that. So there you go, there's a very basic trigger. Now, uh, one thing I want to notice is that it doesn't have to have just one item per trigger. You can have multiple items per trigger, and you can also have multiple triggers per item. Uh, so let's just quickly show you that. We're going to go out of this menu, because we're actually stuck in the ride there. We're going to go back to the scenery item, and we're going to just duplicate it. And we're going to pop a few of them down here, and you'll see that they actually uh, hold the triggered amount of time on them. If we look here, triggered duration three seconds. So that actually stays with them, but they don't hold the uh, the actual attachment to the trigger with them as well. So although they keep the trigger duration there, they um, they don't actually keep anything else. So we're going to set all these to one second. We probably should have set this first, to be honest, and then, and then moved them. That would have made more sense. But then it takes a uh, quick second. Okay, there we go. So now that all these uh, have a one second trigger duration. Just like so. And then we're going to go back into our ride, into our triggers, edit triggers. And then on this first one now, where we've got that first flamethrower selected, we're going to select each of these as well in turn to set them all off. There we go. And uh, that last one just didn't wasn't quite in time there. You'll see when this next car goes over. It, uh, it adds them on. There you go. All four of them get set off. With that in mind, you can then go into these and individually change the delay on each one. So let's set the first one to uh, 4 seconds, the one after that to 4.2, the one after that to 4.4, and the one after that to 4.8. And you'll see this time, as the car gets a little bit closer, uh, you get a... Uh, and I sort of a rolling effect with the flamethrower there. So there you can see it's very easy to set up multiple effects or animatronics onto one trigger. I'm going to quickly show you uh, what it looks like using an animatronic as opposed to a special effect because it is slightly different. Um, we'll go into scenery, we'll go to our props, animatronics, and uh, there's one that's been in the game for ages but hasn't actually animated, and that's the uh, the flying witch. So. Uh, it now animates, so I think it looks fantastic, so we'll use this. And also, this is a really good one that you probably would use within a dark ride, I think, as well. So first of all, we're going to click Activate on Trigger. And uh, what that will do is then, it will, when it finishes its rotation, it will stop. There we go. Uh, now, one thing we want to do is that's its sort of base point. So we're going to twist it round so that it's pointing towards the, uh, the ride. So when you activate an animatronic with a trigger, it will go through a single cycle of its um, of its animation. So we've got activate and trigger set up already. We'll go back into here and we'll edit triggers and we'll add a new trigger. And, uh, and we'll bring it around so we're a little closer to where we want to be. I reckon probably about there. Uh, obviously all these can be tweaked. And then we'll add the objects and we'll click there. And, uh, and it's as simple as that. So now, when a car goes over trigger two, we'll get a single uh, animation of the witch, and she scoots past there. So what I mean, uh, what you could do there is either move this, or you can add the delay time if that's set up to other things that are already in place. Um, she'll keep looping there because you, you know, he was already going. Now he'll, she'll stop. Now the only thing is here. Oh, there you go. You could just about see. I was worried they were too close that she would constantly keep going, but now you can see that she stops in place and only goes when the trigger goes past and she comes shooting past and scares all the kiddies. There you go, simple as that. So, um, I mean, really, you could just have her constantly rotating, uh, but the chances are you might get to a point where she misses them uh, as, she, as they go past. Uh, you know, it comes out of sync. But also, if you've got cars coming on less often than this, um, you want them not moving and then only moving when cars come past, it makes it a little bit more realistic, I think, that they only sort of get going. Uh, and also there's more practical uses as well. For instance, within scenery now, under animatronics, we have uh, a couple of different doors um, that are fantastic looking. And these are perfect for this kind of ride, to be honest. So we set them up uh, like so. And, uh, and it'll just sort of go back and forth. But what we want to do is activate it on trigger. like so, and that should, when it closes, stay closed. There we go, and they'll go through because there's no actual collision on there, this is purely aesthetic. Uh, but this time now, if we add this to our second trigger, we can add an object to it, and now, as they go over it, uh, I think that one just missed that one, we'll try on this next one. As they go over it, the door's open. I think we're going to have to have a slight delay on that one, 
yeah, looks like it. So let's try putting a two second delay on it. Because now obviously we don't want to move it because it's synced up perfectly for this witch. So, um, oh, there we go, just chopped them in half. Let's have a look. So the witch is on the right time, but this time there's a two second delay here. I just still don't think it's enough, but uh, well, you get the idea. We can make that four seconds instead. There you go, opens up and closes behind them. Simple as that, there you go. Really simple. So now the last thing I want to show you is a couple of interesting ideas I've seen around the place and, and thought of myself as well to be honest, but um, that you can do with triggers that you probably wouldn't think of to start off with. I mean the obvious use of them is for setting up scenes within dark rides, uh, but there are a couple of uses that I've seen that are actually really, really good. So uh, let's go and have a look at a couple of those. So after the uh, the world's greatest transport uh, ride, the, the the magic cats, we're now got the world's greatest roller coaster as well. I've just thrown a werewolf down. Uh, the important thing I want to check out is this uh, little pool here um, that you can just about see some special effects in, um, and uh, and we get sort of like a, a water spray effect that you'd find in some rides uh, such as Manta in uh, in Bush Garden in in um, Sea World even. There you go. The heck calls that look. Uh, so I'll quickly show you what we've done here. We've got 10 uh, of the water splashes placed out. Each of these has half a second duration on them. And then within the coaster, we have one trigger, and that trigger sets them all off, and it, uh, each of them is pushed back. Um, we have no delay on that one, 0.2 delay on that one, uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0 0.8, and that runs twice as well, so there's point zero, so there's zero, zero, Two, two. I hope that makes sense. And uh, and they just go off as they go. Now, obviously, you can tweak those numbers to make it look a little bit, little bit more realistic. I've uh, I've just done that to show you the sort of proof of concept. Uh, but there you go. That's a great way of creating a nice water splash. And another thing you can do with coasters as well uh, is, I think, really, really cool. Check this out. So the water's gone and so is the uh, daytime because we've moved into nighttime just to show you a little bit clearer what's happening here. Uh, we've also got this little setup here, one of the new uh, sort of floodlights and a few bits. Obviously you can spend time making this look as realistic as you want, uh, but now you'll see our coaster as it comes down the, uh, down the track here. It comes, uh, has an Android photo. Look at that. Now obviously it doesn't work in the game, you can't actually get the photo, and now hopefully it's a feature they do add in eventually. I'd love to see on-road photos actually in the game, but for now, just as a bit of flavour, uh, you can actually add these in. So what we've got happening here, that's just not the uh, thing back to daytime so we can really see, is the light is set up with a 0 0.1 second trigger duration, which is the shortest it can go, and then on the coaster itself we just have a single trigger, uh, which is just here. And that triggers the same light four times, but each of them has a delay. So the first one goes straight away, zero, and the next one has a 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0 0.6. So every other 0 0.1 of a second, the light is coming on and off, and it gives you that sort of uh, strobe effect. So there you go, there's a couple of interesting ideas you can do with uh, with uh, triggers and uh, a little bit of a guide on how to get started with them. I uh, would love to see what you're able to do with them, so any links to videos or pictures of what you've managed to achieve with triggers, pop it in the, uh, disc in the uh, comments below. Please give us a like, it really does help out the channel, and if you'd like to see more content from Planet Coaster, don't forget to subscribe. Oh.